recording already? going on everybody what do you say there once say it's finally friday amen <laughs> I, get, I get paid today too what's that friday's my worst day yeah why is that it's just the busiest man i got to um i gotta convert a bunch of stuff to navis works upload it to bim 360 make sure everything's kosher there's no floating objects da 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 CAD manager doesn't work on Friday, so I got to take over all her BS and put out all the fires. So I hate Friday. So fun little fact, if you just upload your Revit models and civil 3D files right to uh, right to uh, collaborate, it will do all that clashing for you. So there's really no need to convert anything to Navisworks. Just a little, little plug since, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the architect is requesting that we have DWGs and NWDs. Good Lord. Yeah, I know. Believe me, I know. But until everybody gets used to uh, a solid workflow for that, and, and it's, yeah. So how's the desk, man? Can't complain. I get to, I get to play with all the, the cool toys. Nice. Just kind of sucks that uh, we're not going to be in person for AU again this year. So I know that really does suck. So did you move to Boston or are you just working from home? Yeah, I'm just, I'm working from home. I'm, I'm in Connecticut. So I'm like literally right in between Boston and New York. If you were to draw a straight line, that's, that's me right there in the middle. Pretty okay. much. Right on. Cool. Yeah. I just put Boston on there. Cause that's what my manager told me. So that's the, that's the closest office and just throw that out. I'm like, all right, cool. That makes sense. So who, who's your manager, Charlie? Nah, Ian Coates. Oh, okay. Right on. Yeah. I'm, I'm, so I'm, I'm in the technical sales side. I'm not in the, uh, in the, the product side. Gotcha. So yeah, unfortunately we're going to probably gonna have to wait till next year to, to catch up you know, over a beer or whatever. And, crash the expert elite uh party there <laughs> <laughs> well we still let paul mumford in our little events so yeah that's so true be there too <laughs> that's true Edric with the with the giant cat background there. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. So I'm on a headset kit and you can hear me evidently, yes? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Good. Is the volume goofy or too loud, too soft, or whatever? Uh, it, it is it is just perfect. Oh, oh. That'll be a first. <laughs> Great. I guess we'll, uh, we'll just jump right into this. It's already a couple minutes after the hour. So um, you all should be seeing my, my slide here. So uh, this week I was able to uh, coax Todd Rogers into presenting uh, the civil 3D, 3DS Max animated vehicle workflow for you guys. Notice um, he said this week. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I totally dropped the ball on it last week. I was... I was planning to do that, and then we just had an open mic session and had some nice, uh, nice conversations there. But no worries. Yeah. So, so yeah, this week. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, I'm just gonna I'll I'll stop sharing and I'll pass it over to 
Todd and let him introduce himself and let me know if right. you have any issues sharing. I don't know if I need to make you like a co-presenter or anything like that. All right, let me try here. Let's see. Uh, share screen. Let's go to screen two, I believe. Yeah, can y'all see my cursor? Yep. Can y'all see? No. You can't. Oh, I guess I got to hit the share button. Oh, there you go. There we, go. there we go. All right. Cool. My name's Todd Rogers. I uh, work for Walter P. Moore. I've been there a little over three years now. I uh, used to work in the channel. Uh, I'm Autodesk Expert Elite. Uh, I'm the treasurer for Augie and the uh, editor-in-chief for Augie World Magazine. Amongst other few hats, but uh, we won't dig into all that jazz because it's pr quite boring. But uh, today, um, I'm going to go over this little workflow. I've got some uh, uh, some videos on YouTube, and there's it's like 53,000 views on it, and I've yet to earn a dime from it, so... Uh, oh, well, um, yeah, so anytime during this workflow, if y'all want to chime in with questions, please do don't, don't hesitate to interrupt me. You know, that's the easiest way to do this. Uh, I was asked about a data set earlier this morning and there's really no data set because it's uh, pretty much a workflow, but I do have, <laughs> I would say a white paper because it's on white paper but it's just, you know, kind of a step-by-step, -step. <laughs> you know, kind of my little notes there. But if, if you watch the recorded video or the videos on YouTube, uh, you know, this, this will help you out pretty much. You know, there's one little section where it's pretty imperative to follow the exact same uh, steps uh, because there's a lot of um, questions and comments on my video where people just can't get it to work. And, you know, it, it's hard to to see what actually happened because um, a lot of people, um, as you probably know, will tell you, well, I did this, this, and that, in this step, when in actuality, they didn't. So, you know, keep that in mind. So I want to start with uh, opening InfoWorks here. So Todd, real quick, uh, Michelle was asking, uh, what's your YouTube channel? Uh, it should be, let's, let me uh, jump to it and I'll post it in the chat here. I found the, I found the videos from uh, Gray Tech, but wasn't sure if you had a. Uh, oh yeah, I think it is channel. from Gray Tech, man. It's, it's, it's been up there for a while. Um, where's YouTube? There we go. That's going to be there's there's quite a bit of animations that I did in here, and this one's pretty funny. I uh, did throw the two from uh, from Gray Tech up there for yeah. everyone, but if you had something else that you wanted to share, I think that's the ones. It's that was even before we changed the name to Gray Tech, when everything went straight to the bottom of a hole. <laughs> I jumped right out of the resale <laughs> business right after that. Yeah, it looks like it's a uh, G Total CAD Systems. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, this is the one. Did you did you post it in the chat? I did. I threw a couple in there. Yeah, part one okay. and part two. Yep. That'll work. Okay, I'm just going to open up a random model here. I actually opened up this one because it's the one I was practicing on this week. Uh, and it's got a lot of uh, relief to the terrain, so which makes it nice that you can see that the cars will stick to the road. Uh, so you can see I've got some relief here. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is just come in here and create a component road. And I want to grab the old standard two lanes here, which is the one at the very bottom of the list. It's just two lanes, and that's all there is to it. So I'll uh, just start by creating this road in here. 
And I'm going to make it quite long. That way you can see that the, the cars will go all the way down this road. And we want to make sure that we have curves. All right. And we got one there. That's fine. Good enough. And another thing I want to do, I don't want to see this. I'm just going to drape it to the existing road there. So I'll go to my profile view and come in here and drape profile. There we go. Now we're just sitting on top of the existing ground. Uh, one thing I want to do is I want to change these lanes width uh, by default. I'm not sure why. <laughs> they, uh, yeah. Anyway, just going to make it a nice even 12 there for both of these. All right, so now we've got a 24 foot wide road and up here. So I want to double check that. So if I go and I measure from point to point, let's go here to here. It looks like we're 12 feet. That's great. Fantastic. Now, the other thing I want to measure is I want to measure from the center line of this road to roughly where the ERs are, the end returns. And it looks like I'm about 20 foot plus or minus so i'm going to call it 20 foot just keep that in the back of your head because uh if we don't do this the cars will continue you know going at this direction out into the middle of the intersection which is not what we want so we want them to stop here okay now the animation will continue in a loop which is fine uh there's no way to really make it stop well you could make it stop there's uh we could do this at a later time uh, there's a way to, you know, show like if uh, we had a bus coming into a bus stop and it would stop for a few minutes and then pull out. So we can do that at another time. Uh, so basically, that's all you got to do in InfoWorks is just put this uh, build this component road. Right. So we're going to export this component road out to IMX. I'm going to come up here and click IMX and I'm going to do a poly polygon and I'm just going to draw around the road. like so and double click make sure you do have a coordinate system set this is very important to set your coordinate system uh this is actually in my hometown in tennessee uh so tennessee only has one uh state plane coordinate system in feet in that 83 pretty funny uh so i'm going to place this in a little folder i've got here and we'll just keep it at the default name. And I'm gonna click export. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this and I'm gonna open up Civil 3D. Any questions so far? I don't see anything in the chat, so it looks like everyone's good for right now. All right, good deal. Yep, this is a new thing we're using here. It's uh, it's pretty neat, but it tends to uh, slow down your open time. Anyway, okay. So I'm just going to go here, insert. Uh, well, before I go to insert, I'm going to go set that coordinate system here in this drawing before I do it. So that's TN. TN 83F. Yep, that's it. All right. So now I'll go open InfraWorks model and I'll go browse to that IMX file, which is there. It's in my temp folder, Autodesk presentation, same one. I uh, don't need to click this because it's already reading the uh, database coordinate system, the universal coordinate system, and the drawing coordinate system. Uh, I'm not going to refine selection because I want everything to come in. 
So I'll just go ahead and click open model. And there you have it. I'll go ahead and erase this. Uh, it's important to keep all these surfaces in there. I'm not sure why, but it just tends to work better during this whole process. So I will turn those off. So I'll go in here, surface properties and change those to no display for all these. And I'll just turn off my corridor here by going to isolate, hide, selected. And here we go. So you can see this is where I started my road and I came and continued down and I tied into this other road here. All right. So the first thing I want to do is create a feature line out of my alignment. So I'm going to go to the home tab, feature line, create feature lines from alignment. So whenever you do this, that feature line actually will follow this alignment vertically. So that's how you get your, uh, your vertical. So I'll click the alignment. Now this is important here. Got to make sure that we put this on a site. If you don't put it on a site, it won't work. So I'm just going to call this road. And we'll give it the name there. Another important thing is to uncheck to create dynamic link to the alignment. If you don't do this, you're not going to be able to smooth the feature line. And I'll explain the smoothing method right here in a second. So I'll uncheck that, click OK, and 0 of 71 will be weeded, which is good. Click OK. So when I say smooth it, we want this to be nice and smooth. Right now, it's going from vertice to vertice. So I'll click on this feature line. I want to insert elevation points. And I want to go in increments, uh, we'll say ever five feet. So I'll say five enter. There you can see it puts a elevation point every five feet along this feature line, which smooths it out nice and uh, nice and smooth. <laughs> so you remember the 20 foot that we talked about earlier? This is where we'll trim back this uh, feature line 20 feet. So I'll offset this alignment here 20 feet back. And we'll just trim this feature line now. So we'll go here to trim, select your cutting edge, and then trim the feature line. There you'll see it trims it back. All right. And that does it for Civil 3D. You're done in here now. So now we get to jump into 3DS Max. So I'll go open Max. And I am using 2022 for all of this. Uh, so, you know, that, that, uh, video I created was, you know, several years back. So nothing's really changed in the workflow, except when I go back into InfoWorks, I'll show you a little something that freaked me out this week and I actually figured out how to fix it. So, uh, that's the only one change from the video that you will see, but it's very simple operation. Any questions so far while Max is opening? Nothing in the chat. Very good. Very good. So you will see in uh, Max a civil view up here as soon as that moves out of my way. Okay. So we're going to click civil view, initialize civil view. So what this will do is it'll initialize it and open it up. So now we'll have the actual operations for civil view. So the first thing I want to do is, come on. Go to Civil View, Civil View, Preferences. So in my preferences, I want to make sure I go to localization and change the distance in units. If you're here in the US, obviously you want to change it to miles per hour because by default it is kilometers per hour, okay? And then you wanna go over to the resource kit paths and make sure that you are set to US Imperial or wherever locale you're located okay so just make sure those are set first then we'll go back up to civil view civil view civil view explorer this will bring up this uh little asset card and if you double click this area here it'll dock it 
So now that we've got this, we can start the import process. So I'm going to go up to civil view, civil view, or geometry import, sorry. And guess what I forgot to do? <laughs> so back over in civil 3D, we forgot to export this out, right? So simple. We go to output and export 3ds max very simple and the only thing we want out of here is that feature line that we created right so you can uncheck everything by here and check feature line and click export this will ask you to save it so we're going to save it in that same place this creates a vsp 3d file uh boy if i could remember what that actually meant um but they kept that same file format. And there you'll see it uh, successfully did it in 0.4 seconds. All right, so now we'll get back over to Max again. And we'll go to Civil View, Geometry Import, and click that. And we'll go to Open. And let's go browse to where we located that. That was Desktop, Temp. Autodesk presentation, and there's that file I exported out of Civil 3D. So I'll click open, and it immediately jumps to the feature line portion of this, right? Which is great. So all you have to do here is just check the box and click OK. Now, this is important. It tells you that there's a global shift settings in Civil View that allow you to automatically transform imported data on the X and Y axis to ensure that your model is created as close to the scene origin as possible. This is essential in order to retain high level of accuracy in your model. You have not yet defined any global shift, so Civil View automatically calculates it, okay? And we'll, it says, do you want to adopt these shift settings? Yes, of course. Now, these are important. Notice they're in negative values. Just keep that in the back of your head. And I'll go ahead and click yes. And here it just says interpretation styles. Just click yes here as well. So I want you to notice, let's maximize this viewport. This little thingy thing down here, this little grid, is our 0, 0, 0. Max only works well when it's close to zero comma zero. Okay, just keep that in mind. So here's our feature line. And if you hold the alt key down and then your wheel, you can orbit. So you'll see there it's got the, the way the terrain lays in there, right? So let's start putting our cars on here. So we're gonna go back to civil view. We're gonna go to civil view and then object placement style editor. So here's where we place our cars. So we're going to click this button right here to so add a new element. And when I add this new element, you'll notice that it automatically highlights emergency vehicles. Well, we want more than emergency vehicles, so we're going to toggle on cars. Then it asks for the parent shape. Okay, so we click the parent shape. Our parent shape is our feature line. Notice it highlights. As soon as it highlights, you can pick it then it'll tell you right there, it's that feature line. So make sure that it says that it's a civil 3D feet line, okay? So once you've done that, we want on the longitudinal placement, we want to place multiple at random stations and the count. This will be on one side of the road. So I'm going to make 10 cars. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, the more cars you have, the longer it's going to take to export this in a minute, okay? So we want multiple random station, and we want to specify the miles per hour. So I'll say 45. The horizontal offset, remember we made the lanes 12 foot wide, so we want the middle of the car to be halfway into that lane, so the horizontal offset will be 6. All right? And we want to make sure we use random objects from the selected category, which is cars. So we check this box here and we click apply. And once you do that, you'll see it places the cars along this line. So if I move my scrubber bar, you'll see the cars move. All right. So we're moving our scrubber line there. So now we need to place cars on the other side. 
So real simple, we're gonna right click on this, we're gonna copy it, then we're gonna right click and paste it. Now basically we give everything the opposite values here. Now this is important, I said everything, right? So the miles per hour must be negative. Okay, that's important. The miles per hour must be negative. The horizontal offset must be negative. And the rotation will be 180. Okay, and we click apply. And now if I move my scrubber bar, you'll see we got cars going both directions like we want. Now, I did a little bit of experimenting yesterday when I was going through this, make damn sure that we wasn't going to have issues today. So I went through here and I placed some signs, right? So I'm going to add a new element to place some signs. And, uh-oh. We messed up my cars. Did we mess up my cars? No, we didn't. All right, I'm going to click close first, then open that back up. Oh, come on, get out of the way. Now we'll place some signs. So I'll come here and parent shape, pick here. And we want multiple at random count. I don't know, we'll go 10 signs on both sides as well. Miles per hour doesn't matter. Horizontal offset, so if we got a 12-foot lane, we want them about 20 feet from the center line. And random, and we want signs. We'll do miscellaneous. So we'll apply that. And there we place some signs. Now keep in mind, what I did find out yesterday was you'll see the sign has uh, you know, actual text and, and stuff on it. That does not carry over to InfoWorks, unfortunately. I couldn't get it to work. But the sign comes in. So I just wanted to show you, show you this and explain it to you. So same thing. I'm going to right click here, copy this one, paste this one. And that's going to be negative 20. And use random from signs. Okay. And apply. Now the first thing that I forgot was the 180 and apply. So I'll notice this too. Whenever you're doing this, that whenever you hit this apply button, it resamples everything again. Okay. So keep that in mind. All right. So now we have this. Now let's, let's take a look at editing these cars, adding cars and things of that nature. So you'll see here, these two guys are right, right on top of each other. So I want to make sure I move this one back a little bit. So when you click on one over here in the Civil View Explorer, you get lots of options, right? So your station control is actually where this car is sitting along the station of this feature line. So if I move this bar here, notice the gizmo moves. So whenever I let go, it moves the car to there, okay? Now if I scroll down, you'll see we got vehicle type, which cannot be edited, right? Not in this dialog box, but you can change the color of the car all day long. You can make it blue. So now I've come over here, now it's blue, right? Again, change that color, make it white. And pick over here and it's back to white. So let's say we wanted to add a car, all right? So if we're going to add a car, we go to our resources tab up here and we're going to click on vehicles and here's the list of vehicles we can add. I'm going to add, yeah, I'm going to be a little weird here and let's add a front loader, right? So I'm going to add this front loader. So I'm going to right click, place object on selected shape. Well, guess what? The shape's not selected. So let's come here and select it. Now, if we right click on it, we can place that animated at a constant speed. All right. 
constant speed. Remember, we did 45 miles an hour. I'll click OK. So now you can see I've got a front end loader here. All right, so now we got a front end loader. So if I go back to Civil View Explorer, now I can change the uh, station control of this. So we'll put it about right there. And again, we need to change that horizontal offset to six. So if I click there, so now we got this front end loader that's going to be moving up and down the road with the traffic, right? All right. So that's how you add and manipulate vehicles, right? Now, the next thing we need to do is fix this scrubber bar to be the, the correct position. Okay, so, uh, okay. Okay, we're not going to do the scrubber bar yet. Now, here's what I was mentioning to you earlier. The next steps are extremely important to do this in the order that I'm about to show. So I'm going to go to a top view here. And I'm going to draw a rectangle around this whole thing. So I'm going to go to create, shapes, rectangle. So here I'm just going to draw a rectangle. Now I need to move this rectangle to 0, 0, 0. So I'm going to right click on the move. And this gives me the option to just enter the zero, zero, whoops, zero. And of course we have zero. So we'll close this. Now we can't move this rectangle because it's at zero, zero, zero. But notice we have a piece out here that's not encompassed in this uh, rectangle. So I'm going to scale it, right? So I'm going to click the scale. And I'm just going to move my X out until it's inside the the rectangle. It doesn't matter how big the rectangle gets, just as long as your feature line is inside of that rectangle, okay? So now we can address, adjust the scrubber bar. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to go to this first vehicle right here, and I'm going to pick on it. And I want to move this scrubber bar until that vehicle shows right back up here, okay? So I'm going to move it until that vehicle shows back up and you'll know because it'll still be selected. There it is. See there. So now I'm going to move this and we can, you know, refine it by clicking like so. So when it disappears, you click one click back until it's there again. Okay. Don't have to adjust it much. So once you, get it to this position, you're going to click this little icon down here, your time configuration. And you're going to change the end time to match what says on the scrubber now, 10, 12. Right there. And it'll shrink that scrubber down to that number. Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to change a couple of settings on this rectangle. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click this modify tab and it says edit poly. Well, we need to make sure we select the feature line or excuse me, the rectangle to where it says rectangle here. You're going to expand rendering and the only thing you're going to change is you want to enable in renderer and enable in viewport and that's it. Okay. Now we're going to right click because we still have the rectangle selected, we're going to rec right click, go down to convert to, and we're going to convert it to an edible mesh. All right, once you've done that, you're good to go. The only other thing we need to do, and I'll provide this file to you, is um, we got to convert the mental ray into standard materials, okay? And there's a script that I have for this. And it's convert mental ray to standard materials. And you basically just take this thing and drag and drop it into your workspace and it'll convert it. Okay. So now we can export this out to a Colada file. So I'm going to go file. 
export, export. Make sure you change your file type to Colada, which is DAE file. And I'm going to put it in that same folder. And I'll just call it uh, for InfoWorks. And click Save. Now, again, well, first thing is it's going to come out like you see it right here. You're going to want to expand animation and expand bake animation and make sure you check the box to bake the animation. That's the only thing you need to do on the export. Okay. And then when you click, click OK, again, it depends on how many cars and objects you're exporting out as to how long it takes to export this file out. You'll see this one's fairly quick because I only have 20 cars and um, what I did, 20 signs or less. But it's fairly quick. So while it's exporting, any questions? Nothing in the chat. All right, perfect. You will get some warnings about this, that, and the other texture export incompatibility. That would be our signs. So that's why our signs doesn't have letters on them when we bring it into InfoWorks. Okay, so we're done here. So I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to go back over to InfoWorks and we'll do the importation process. So basically, we're going to go to our data sources and we're going to select 3D model. We're going to browse to that Collada file. Click open and I'll double click on it to configure it. So the type is city furniture. So don't forget that it's city furniture. Don't forget to set your coordinate system. Got to have the coordinate system, right? Now, if I click close and refresh, you'll see there are no cars on my street, right? So remember back in Max, I said that shift importation thing was very important. Okay, so if I go to Civil Explorer over here and I go to scene settings, there's that global shift import. So I'm going to write this down. Now keep in mind, both are in negative. That means when I input them into InfraWorks, both have to be positive. They have to be the exact opposite. So if one was negative, one was positive, you would do the opposites, okay? So it's very important. So I'm going to write this number down. CO2 5660 Okay. So go back into um, configure this. So I'll double click it. So here for our offset, the X will be 302-5660. The Y, 785-652. And I'll click close and refresh. And I want you to notice again, the cars will not show up. Why is this? Well, for some reason, the uh, conversion from Max to InfoWorks is the meter conversion, right? So if I go back in here, I want to make sure I add that meter conversion to the X, Y, and Z scale. Okay, so that's 3.2808. That's how many feet's in a meter, 3.2808. 3.2808, and if I click close and refresh, the cars and signs should show up. Voila. Now, here's what I noticed yesterday that freaked me out, and I was like, oh, my gosh, something's changed. It doesn't work anymore. You see the cars? You can see them if I'm... If I touch them, right, 
Well, little setting in here I tested and works like a charm. If I go to the 3D model tab, and I check the box to invert the transparency and click close and refresh, we're golden. And there you have it. So see there, the material does not come over for the signs. So I don't know if you would want to do the signs or not. You could, but uh, if not, and notice if we come up here to the end of the road that the cars will disappear before they go into the intersection. That's that 20 foot we trimmed off the feature line, remember? So if you wanted to have cars animated on this road, you know, they wouldn't actually run into each other. So any questions? That's pretty much the workflow. There's our little, <laughs> our little guy there we added. And you'll see it sticks pretty much to the road the whole way. So that's why you'd want to do that smoothing. Otherwise, you'd get really jagged, that's jagged animation. Exactly direction. right. Yep. You'll notice that these cars will feel every little single bump in the road. So you'll see it jump, jump, jump a little bit. That's exactly why you want to put that smoothing in that feature line. So you could go every foot if you wanted to. I went every five foot. If you went every foot, it would be even smoother. So, yeah, thanks for uh, mentioning that. That's it. So what do you all think? Is this something you might uh, throw in your next model or have you have you messed around with it at all and hadn't you know come across any issues, any problems doing this workflow? I'm just curious what other other people are doing or have done or you know if you might do it in the future. Pretty quiet crowd. Yeah. There's nothing else in the chat. Uh, let's see. Uh, I've used some of. I've used Todd's other workflow. Just just getting the animation in Infoworks. Uh, I mean in in 3ds Max, um, and felt that was very helpful. Um, tried to do some stuff in Max, but never imported into Infoworks. This looks really good. However. It, once again, it pains me to see that we've got to use four pieces of software that probably one piece of software <laughs> could could do. Uh, it, it, it's terrible. I, I understand why there's there's probably a revenue stream or, or something. And not I'm not I'm not you know crapping on you, Matt, because you're an Autodesk employee now. But uh, you know this this four three pieces of software we had to use to get to this point. Uh, uh, I, I, to I totally get it. I mean, you, you certainly can do some of the stuff with the, uh, the traffic simulation in InfraWorks. Um, however, you know, if you've ever messed around with that, it, it can be overwhelming. There's a lot right. going on with, with traffic simulation and, uh, you know, being, you know, knowing every little toggle and value and, and how they relate to things, uh, you know, at least for me, it, it's totally overwhelming. And twin motion is something that we are looking into at the moment as okay. well. I was getting ready to say you could do every lay everything out in InfoWorks, bring it right into twin motion, man. And I mean, I use it almost every day. It's fantastic. That's good to hear. Yeah. And I may reach out to you, Todd. On oh, that yeah, absolutely. Don't hesitate. Well. Uh, I'll show you a little, little something here. Um, just to show you how easy this is, I'll, I'll actually bring this model in. Let's just do that so I can show you how easy it is. So if I go to, uh, do we have time for this, Matt? Yeah, we got like oh, 15, 15, 15 minutes. minutes. Okay. So I, instead of IMX, I'll go to FBX. So I'll export out as FBX. And I'll just pick this small area here. Well, before I do that, I'm going to make sure I uh, delete the cars. I don't want the cars coming over. Okay, FBX, Polygon. And of course, I always do a coordinate system. Doesn't really matter. Uh, desktop. 
Okay, save, export. All right, so over in uh, Twin Motion, I would import that FBX. And there's a couple of settings you want to keep in mind here is you want to keep the hierarchy in the materials. And I usually keep both for material conflicts. Now to find your stuff quickly, you can pick it over here and right click and zoom to selection. So here is our area. So all this scene can be moved up to match this, or you can move your scene down. It doesn't matter. You know, I can move it down. Uh, we could change the scene here. So we would go to um, location, background, and I'll just change it to none for now and delete this starting ground because we don't need it. And when I come in here, navigation's a little bit of a pain. Uh, unfortunately, the space pilot does not work with uh, twin motion, so that would make it easier, but they've yet to get that to work with it. But a lot of drag and dropping in here, which is nice. You know, we can go to ground, nature, grab some grass for this, and change the scale of that. Uh, same for all these, since it, you know, InfoWorks tiles things. So we could get into the road as well. And why they have not fixed this yet, I'll never understand, Matt. <laughs> but we can move that down to negative 0.25. So you can actually move the striping in here to match the road. Uh, we can go to man-made, drag this asphalt over. You know, you can give it as much texture or less texture as you want. You know, placing objects is really the same as well. You know, if we had, uh, let's say, we got, uh, let's say this guy's over here hitchhiking, all right? So let's rotate him around. We can make him do different types of animations. So he could be doing this, he could be drinking. He could be phoning somebody, right? Different type of phoning. Yeah, so he's hitchhiking. Uh, the vehicles are really easy. Uh, you can do uh, animated bicycles, all kinds of stuff. Um, you can paint the vegetation on here. So let me show you that real quick before I put animated stuff on here. So to paint um, vegetation, you come down here and you do vegetation paint. Well, let's say we wanted, uh, let's say we wanted pecan trees. We want some, uh, uh, what else we want? Um, maybe throw some color in here. You know, all these can be changed to the density, uh, different types of settings, the age, turn the growth on, what season do you want it? You know, turn the wind on. Uh, so we want probably some grass, maybe some, uh, some tall grass, maybe. No, I don't know. Let's just do wild grass. Just grab that, bring it down. And then you just paint that on to your area like so. So we have, you know, random stuff painted on here and you'll see the grass and everything just kind of blows in the wind. And as far as vehicles and stuff. It's real simple. You come in here and go to your uh, vehicle path. So you'll see that you got different paths. You got a character path where people walk. You got bicycle path. You got a custom path. We're going to do a vehicle path. And we're just going to pick here. And we'll start by picking a node here. Come and pick a node. Pick a node. And we'll just pick another node and end it. All right. So now if we go look at what we got going on here. Uh-oh. Yeah, the don't even navigation sometimes is oof. All right, let's see here. 
You're really going to like this. This is really cool. <clears throat> All right. So the vehicle path, we can select it here and start editing. So the, the lanes are one. We want two lanes on. All right. So it's going to give us a two lane road now. And it looks like we need a little bit of an offset, maybe two feet, maybe four feet, maybe six feet. <laughs> All right. So change the density of your cars. <coughs> Obviously, you don't want to be behind somebody doing 16 miles an hour. So we can put it like 50. Uh, yeah, I would need to adjust these a little bit to get them in the lane a little better. Uh, I just trying to do this as fast as I can so we don't burn up all your time today. Uh, just want to show you a couple of other little things. You know, you can come up here and say uh, your time of day. You know, you can make it dark. That way the lights come on on the vehicles like so. So you see brake lights and headlights. Uh, you can also let's go back to the sunshine. You can also come in here and where is it? Uh, the weather. You can change the weather to snowing. So this is what Matt likes to drive in. And you can do rain. Where's the rain? Where's the rain? That's the season. Okay, so the weather. Here we go. We want to make sure it's raining now. So you can change the rain. All this can be adjusted by using these, like I would pick this up out of the ground a little bit to get these cars, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> get these cars <coughs> on the pavement. Now, one thing I found about this, this rain thing that's really cool is when I turn it off to where it's just wet, it will show ponding areas. So you'll see the ponding areas. It's pretty neat. But yeah, that's twin motion. You know, I, I whipped that up pretty, pretty quick. So you can, you can see, you know, a real quick fast. And if you get down and dirty into it, you can get really, really uh, detailed with this stuff. And it looks very realistic. That looks good. Thanks. So we got a question from Michelle. Can you drag the animation from 3ds Max into twin motion? That's a good a question. I've never brought Max into Twin Motion. Um, I don't know. Good question. I know you can export it, but I don't know how well it would come in. So that's something that uh, I'll be playing with here soon. Good one. I've actually messed around with uh, Twin Motion a little bit myself when looking at. Uh, uh, VR. Yeah. So, so bringing, you know, try, you know, kicking the tires on it, testing the limits of it and trying to pull in, you know, a massive InfraWorks model and, uh, you know, mess around with, with the VR aspect that way of, you know, right. an entire site of, you know, talking, you know, 40, 50 acres or whatever. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, I like it a little better than Lumion. I think it's, it's, very close, you know, pretty much do the same thing the same way. <clears throat> but um, I, I just like it a little better. It's so just, you'd, you'd recommend you'd recommend Twin Motion over Lumion is what you're saying? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I've, I've played with both of them and. and Twin Motion updates like a lot now. You know, now that they've been purchased by Unreal or uh, Epic Games, um, you know, they were owned by a, um, a French company. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but, you know, Epic bought them a couple of years back and man, they have really stepped up the game, added more and more materials, uh, more and more uh, objects. Uh, so it's it's becoming better and better, you know, each time. So how does that handle updates from 
from uh, InfraWorks. So you export, you know, make changes, re-export oh, to great FBX. Great question, man. That's a great question. So what I have found is if you're going to do that, make sure you export the whole model every time, use entire model instead of selecting a polygon selection. The reason being is you can never choose the exact same polygon, right? When you're exporting out. So it kind of shifts it. So in, um, if you need to go back into InfoWorks and tweak something, there's basically a refresh. If you, if you export out of InfoWorks as the same file and overwrite that file, then you just hit a refresh button in twin motion and it reloads it. Now, when it does that, you lose all the materials that you just did. You don't lose cars and, and animated stuff like that. But the materials, like I drag and drop onto the InfoWorks um, base, those will be lost and you'll have to redo it. But dragging and dropping don't take long. You know. So basically, I'd have to do the grass again and then the pavement again. But yeah, it's a simple, you know refresh but if you do the do the polygon again you never select the exact same path exactly so you might get a little shift or something but it's easy to move the model around and import or uh, twin motion and see that got a new update today so but yeah just to show you that uh So if I go import, grab that same one. So if I export out of InfoWorks again, I want to rename it the same exact name and overwrite that actual file. That way I just come here and I hit this refresh button and it refreshes it. It's done. <clears throat> that simple. Cool stuff. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me today, man. Oh, thank you for uh, for doing all the heavy lifting today. <laughs> yeah, and uh, at the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I asked you a week ago. I know. Yeah, give you a heads up. I know. You did. <laughs> I'm just hacking on you. It's been a while since I've seen you. I got a yeah, hack. Yeah, it has. It's been, it's been too long. Yep. So hopefully, uh, maybe you can come down for Tony's thing, man. Tony does something every year for AU, and we go up to Dallas and, you know, just so we can see people face to face. It'd be nice to get out for sure. For yeah. Sure. Fugit came in last year. That was fun. Christopher Fugit a, is a riot, man. He's fun. Cool. So I see we're almost at the top of the hour before we cut out for the weekend. Any last questions, any final thoughts, comments, concerns? So you, you mentioned you had a, a white paper. Yes. Will you be able to share uh, that so people can Yeah, let me uh, read along, follow along. Is that, share that Let's see here more. Uh, let's see. I'm not a, we use teams all the time now. So let me stop sharing, stop sharing. That way I can get over here to the chat window. Chat file. I want to upload this. And it's very simplistic as you'll see when you open it. You'll be like, okay. So it's good to follow it with the video. That way you're, you're not completely lost. Uh, and I just did this, you know, just this morning. So you guys would have it. So there's the, uh, the document. And I need to send it to everyone. <laughs> I think I just sent it to Michelle only. Let's see here. There we go. Awesome. 
you're quite welcome. So everybody be sure to grab that. Thank you guys. Have a great weekend. Hey, take care, Chris. Yeah, you guys too. And thanks again for having me, Matt. And uh, we'll be talking soon. Awesome. Thanks again. All right, guys. Have a good weekend, everyone.